Good morning, everyone. Today we read the Psalm one twenty eight. Let's look at what are the true blessings. First one is like an introduction. Verse two to four is another section talks about the content of being blessed, and then the last section, verse five and six, is a summary of the blessing. So in this psalm. Is one of the song of essence. What is the song of essence? And the Israelites they went to keep the festivals. They climbed the mountain of the Lord, and they would sing along the way the song of essence. And so, when they also. When they were about to climb to the, to the temple mount, to go into the temple, they would also sing the songs. And in Jerusalem, it's interesting. You'll be ascending when you approach Jerusalem, whether you go from the east, south, west, and east. So. Um, the Temple Mount is a high point. You need to continue to climb up when you go to the Temple Mount, and you want to go up to the Temple. Everyone start from the same place, climbing upstairs. They will sing the Song of Essence again. So it's special. The Song of Essence prepare you. Pre- You、uh, means that you prepare your hearts to see God. Being blessed is very simple. It means your life is going up. Your life is being promoted. You are improving, and the end point is the temple, which represents the presence of God. Whether a man is blessed or not. Depends if our life is being promoted by God, if we are close to God or not. When the Israelites would sing these songs, they would approach Jerusalem. They would get closer and closer to Jerusalem and to the temple, and which represent that their lives are closer to God. I. Took a lot of tour groups to Israel. The first time I went was the same. It was very special. When the plane arrived in Jerusalem, or in Israel, just you couldn't help、um, dropping your tears. A lot of passengers, or a lot of、uh, tour group members, has such an experience. And、uh, usually people will be sleeping from the airport to Jerusalem, but when we all approach Jerusalem, we start tearing. You feel you're very close to God. You feel like you can touch God. I think、uh, it was the same for Baraka the first time she went there. When they sing the song. Of essence, they would feel the same. Feel like you're closing, being closer and closer to God, and they want to climb up the mountain to go into the presence of God, and that's what's special about this song. The first, the first says, "Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways." Blessed. The word is the same we- word as the second verse. You shall be happy. The word happy. So first one, first two, first four, and first five all have this word, bless. <coughs> But it has a different word in Hebrew. First one and two is the same word. The first four and five is another word for bless. Let's have a look later. But in the first verse, it says, "Who are the blessed ones? The one 
who fears the Lord and who walks in His ways. And the one who fears the Lord is the one who puts the Lord in the right position. And man would、um, submit under him. Give God all the respect and honor to God, and that's fearing God, and that's very important. If we don't have such an attitude, it's like someone doesn't know who. Is in the position. If you're an authority, you you don't like it when people don't treat you respectfully accordingly, and don't、uh, just treat you as anyone else and nobody. Sometimes, so we need to put God in the right position in our hearts. Give weight to it. And we need also to do His word, obey His word. We need to live out His instructions, not just listen to it. Last night we also meditated on a theme or on a question with the MG tribe leaders. To follow God, the first step. What do we do? Is to hear the word of God and to reflect our life. So I also encourage you, those who are listening to the morning devotion, also reflect in your life. What prevents you from hearing the word of God? We don't just listen to the word of God and forget about it, but we need to store that in our hearts and then live it out. If we hear the word of God, we don't let live it out. It's not profitable for us. This is what the Bible says: "Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways." And what can block us from hearing God? Last night.、Uh, We heard from God, especially the man. Let me summarize. For man, what prevents us from hearing God is stubbornness. A lot of men are stubborn. We look at our experiences. Our wisdom, what we've decided, we think it will work. If God says no, change another way. It's hard for us to change. Our lives are not flexible. We have a lot of framework, mindset, Kong Kong. I think that a lot of men have like asparagus, psych, cannot turn, make turn, cannot change, just go straight. Blindly, like a buffalo. That's why the Bible describes us as stiff-necked cow, stiff-necked、uh, people. It's hard for you to turn the direction of a cow. Men are like cows sometimes, the buffaloes. It's hard to turn, and it's very stubborn. And I'm the same. So we have some programs. Don't know where the programs come from. For example, in the morning, I say today I want to do something, and then your whole person is like programmed. We must do that. And then if something comes along your way, if you find it disturbing, you just want to go your own direction. That prevents us from hearing God. So. In these forty days, let's reflect. Our lives need a flex flexibility, a listening ears. Otherwise, we miss the way of God. We cannot hold on to the blessing. 
because the Bible tells us, "Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways." When what God says to us is different from what we think or imagine, can we adjust to follow God and follow His ways? Just imagine, be wise. If God says something to me and I cannot adjust to follow, how can I be blessed? If I don't hear the word of God, what does it mean to follow God? If I'm stubborn to hold on to what I think, then why do I believe God? Isn't God wiser than me? If I understand, then I don't do it. Then who's in, who's the Lord? If I am in charge, then I don't fear God. I don't put God in the most important position to follow Him. A lot of time we want God to follow us. As we worship idols, we have the same attitude. We just offer a barbecued pork, a roasted pork, and then we want Him to follow us. If you love me, let me pursue somebody. Let me win in the gambling. We give a lot of conditions and want God to follow us. We say, Lord, if you love me, let me be wealthier. If that's the case, then who's God? And that's like a matter of what is fearing God and walking in His ways. Fearing God is putting God in the right position to give Him weight, to put Him as a priority. And blessed, it, this word is the same as the word in verse two. In the English translation, is clearer. First one is as blessed is everyone who fears the Lord who walks in His ways. The second verse: When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. The word blessed is the same word as happy in the second verse in Hebrew. So if you can. Walk in God's way, and you're blessed, and you'll be happy. Let's reflect more or meditate more. Why are those who follow God and walks in His way happy? When are we happy? It's、so、when everything is smooth, when we don't have any worries, when we don't have stress, when we can relax. This is what we pursue. And what do Hong Kong people do? We go for, we go traveling. We lay down all our burdens and our worries, and we feel happy going to a new environment. It's not the environment that you labor every day. Hong Kong is very congested, very crowded. But you go abroad, it's a very spacious. And in your heart, you can also feel more spacious. You can sleep on a hotel bed, and it's even wider. The room is more spacious, and you feel happy. So it's like we're addicted to traveling, even bound by traveling. The young people would use their credit card when they go traveling. But when they come back, they're not happy anymore because they have to return their loans. So the Bible tells us, what is true happiness? Fearing God and walking in His ways, respecting God, putting God in the right place. You're willing to listen to God, then we're happy because God's ways will direct us. Then we don't need to be worried. Don't need to be. Worried if our decision is right or not. Don't need to take up the stress because we know that God will take care of it. And we are like going to vacation. We are not stressed. We know that God will take care of it. Just like when we're sent to sent out to plant new crop, we know that God is with us. God is leading us. Then we don't have stress. We feel happy. All、oh, our coworkers, we have the same feeling. This year, outside it's like、um, a roller coaster, social movement, and 
people lose their jobs and the tear gas even in our first surface everybody is worried and burdened and sad but here we have a different atmosphere we feel happy we don't need to worry and before、uh, when we need anything God provides just like God gives us a venue for the anniversary the atmosphere was good and when Baraka was looking for an apartment and then it's just a perfect one dropped down from an apartment as she lives close by we are all blessed and happy just like Loretta Simo ordered something to the church it, it was a day off and it needs to be put into the fridge or freezer and the next day we came back oh where's the box and we find it in the box because Baraka came back she lives so close by it only takes her about two minutes so she often comes back and she sees that box so oh it's better to put it in the fridge so she put it there so it's so good you live close by and then things will go to the fridge you don't need to be worried so we're really happy so fearing the Lord and those who walk in His ways are blessed because you know that God is your back up you don't have stress or burdens the direction of life has been decided you only need to follow God to follow this direction and you will receive the heavenly city so you'll be happy that's the introduction first one and how can you be such be, be so happy first two to four when you eat the labor of your hands you shall be happy and it shall be well with you and as I said the word happy is the same word as blessed So first three says, when you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. So to be happy in life is not just to eat and just be lazy. Like in Hong Kong, there was a famous song that oh, better that we don't have to work and we just enjoy life. In Taiwan, there's a saying also. Taiwanese like the saying they have the attitude of, of worker let me think so it's the best is to find a job where there's nothing much to do and then you it's close to your home and you have a high position you have a high salary and you can sleep every day until you wake up naturally and you have a lot of money you have no stress and that's what people desire does that mean is does that mean blessed being blessed we know david's story after he became a king he attained such a condition he could wake up naturally and then one day he went out to the garden to have a look and he saw a woman and then his life started to go downhill and then what happened you know his son betrayed him and then another the son died and God punished him until he returned to God so we should reflect and think to be lazy and just to eat is it really being blessed we need to th- meditate about it neighbor 
is a curse. Toil and labor is a curse, but work is a blessing. So when God put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, He didn't say, "Now from now on, you can just eat and relax and be lazy. You don't need to move around." No, God gave them the Garden of Eden and asked them to rule over it to keep the garden. There's work. There was a job for them. So. We should be happy. Sometimes we think, when we return to heaven, what is it like there? Will we be jobless? Will that be boring forever? I don't know if we've experienced that. Maybe a personality. I cannot really stop when I was in Vancouver. Everyone likes the environment there, but after living there for a long time, you feel like, oh. What am I doing? It's like I'm waiting to die. I'm just only in my twenties. Can I retire now? The lifestyle there is really suitable for retirement. People are nice. The weather is good. Environment is super nice. But the problem is too beautiful. When you first arrive, you can enjoy it. A few years ago, Pastor Josh and Simo took us to. Switzerland, and Pastor Joshua asked me, "Do you want to stay here to plant a church?" I said, "It's beautiful, mountain, beautiful rivers, but it's very boring. I will die after three months here. Nothing changes here. Every day, if you walk this way, you will meet. You know, then." You meet another. You walk another way, then you will meet Baraka. The later you see, Tikva, every day is the same. It's very boring. So the Bible tells us, if we eat the labor of our hands, we'll be happy. In our lives, we need to give in order to be satisfied. Have you experienced it? You work hard. You study hard, and then you receive hundred percent, and you feel really, really satisfied. Or just like you do exercise, you、uh, play basketball, you go cycling, and then you win a champion, and then you feel really happy and fulfilled. Or you go, you go to the gym, and your muscle popped up, and. If you're really good about it, but if you not work for it and you just suddenly become muscular, you don't feel as fulfilled. So here it says, we can be happy and it's profitable for us when we eat the labor of our hands. So we should not be lazy. We need to work. It's a blessing to be able to work. Then we'll be truly happy. Verse three: Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Your children like olive plants all around your table. And it's related to verse two. If you build up your family, your life, your work, to get what you need, and to be a responsible man, sometimes Christians are not so down to earth. I talked to a lot of Christian boss, and in the end, they said,、uh, maybe ask the Christian boss, when you hire workers, it's good to hire Christians, and then the company can serve God together. But as I share with all the Christian boss, the conclusion is, a lot of bosses they told me I don't want to hire Christians. It's better to hire non-Christians because they think that oh you are the brother, you are a brother, and they accuse the boss according to the biblical principle. You should give me mercy, give me grace. Where's grace?
unless that person wants to give you grace, then you can receive it, and you should feel that oh, I don't deserve it, and I'm thankful for that. Then that's true grace. Otherwise, you're just robbing a boss. Just like you come before me, and I see you're having difficulty, and I want to give you money to help you, and I'm, and then I'm happy to do that, and then you feel so thankful for that. But a lot of times, we twisted this and think that oh, you're a pastor, you should give me this grace. So it's like robbing the pastor or the boss. A、uh, Christian sometimes are lazy, and they sh-、uh, shift the blame. They think that oh, my boss is also a Christian. Will he lay me off? When the boss wants to lay him off, he can say, "Well." Can you be accountable to Jesus? How can you fire me? But when a boss asks you to work overtime, and now you demand him to give you grace, that's not God's way. We should labor in our work, and we shall be happy. And our Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Your children like olive plants. If we can work hard and be active in our job, to be involved, you can establish your family also. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine. If we do not build. Your house like this. You don't work hard. Then your wife will not be in your house. Your wife will be in the farm, working hard also. So if you build up a family like that, then your wife can be happy in the house, and you can be fruitful, like fine, and、um, which means you have many children. Your children, your wife can. Relax and stay inside the house like a fruitful vine, and cherish your heart. If you do not work hard like that to establish a family, your wife cannot be a fruitful vine. Then I tell you, your wife will become like a spiky durian, and not a fruitful vine. So if you want to be happy, you need to work hard to follow God. And don't be like a buffalo, a stubborn one. And then your children will like olive plants. If you've seen an olive tree, it doesn't need to be grafted in. It just grow out from the mother tree. The shoots will come out, and those are new shoots around the mother tree. And so, the Israelites said, "A blessed life is like an olive tree. An olive tree can live for thousands of years. If you go to the Garden of Gethsemane with us, you see that there are still olive trees over three thousand years old, bearing fruits. And the shoots, new shoots, are still coming out from the mother tree. So, the Israelites like to use this." Picture. They have a strong bonding with their parents. Just imagine what gives, what makes their parents most happy. That your children will surround you. You are the center. Wherever you go, you see your children and your grandchildren, and the atmosphere is unity and and harmony. And then you're very happy. How do we receive that? Is that we should fear God and walk in His way and. Work hard, then you will have this. Verse four: Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. So can you see? Look carefully. What is happiness? 
not the one who's lazy. The one who fears God shall be blessed. This word is a different from the word in the first one or two. The word here, blessed, means bowing down in the original language. Or kneeling down. It means new kneeling down. When you put God in your first priority and you walk in His way, you work hard, and then you are being blessed, which means that you are you kneel down to receive everything from God. And actually, it's a two direction. We bless God, and God also blesses us. So we kneel down to God, and God also kneel down to us. What does it mean? Well, not literally that God will kneel down to us, but it's like God will bow down up、uh, um to、uh, towards us. It's like when you go to the Middle East, you want to climb a camel. How can you climb up on this high camel? The camel will kneel down, and so you can climb up on it. And the camel owner will signal or hit the camel a little bit, and the camel will will kneel down, and then you can climb up. The camel and sit on top. So God is like a great God, and and when He like kneel down, it's like He approaches, and we can receive the blessings from Him. So when we put God in the respectable position to treat Him accordingly as God, then we receive blessing. First five and six is a summary or a blessing. The Lord bless you out of Zion, and may you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yes, may you see your children's children. <coughs> so, Zion is the Temple Mount representing the presence of God. So, when you fear God and walk in His way, and you don't be lazy. You build up your life and family. <coughs> the psalmist says, "May the Lord bless you, out of Zion, where He is." And this word "bless" also means kneeling down or bowing down. And can imagine just like children, one or two years old. When will the father bow down to us? It's when daddy hugs us. And give us the toys or the candies. So may the Lord bless you like this. May you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. And what is the good of Ch- Jerusalem? Jerusalem means peace, shalom, from God.、So、receive the peace from God. As I mentioned. If I have a lot of money, but I don't have peace in my heart, I worry about robbers and my health. Like I may be very wealthy, but if I'm not healthy, all my money goes to the doctor. Then there's no blessing. So may the Lord bless you, give you the good of Jerusalem, give you peace. Hong Kong people always say, "I just want to eat peacefully." So that's a true blessing. May you see the good of Jerusalem. Jerusalem represents the peace, the presence of God. God makes people abandoned and do not add any worries to it. And you. Won't only see the good of Jerusalem, but you can also see your children's children, which means you have a long-lasting blessing. The older you are, the more blessed you are. Some people, the older they are, the lonelier they feel. They lose more. But here in this psalm, we can see that when you feel the Lord walk in His way and build up your family, work hard, the blessings will last long.
because it culminate it,、uh, because the blessings are accumulated. So the older you are, the more peaceful you feel. That's what it is being blessed. So in the end, when you have an elder at home, you have a treasure. You you can see the outcome, the end, and that's a really good outcome. Peace be upon Israel. When may this kind of peace be to Israel, representing the whole world, because there's a source of blessings in the whole world. When Israel can enter into this blessing, the whole world can enter into this blessing. So the secret of blessing is: first, fear God; secondly, walk in His way; thirdly, eat the labor of your hands. And then you should be happy. And you can also translate it as worthy to be praised. This kind of life is worthy to be praised. So may Lord open our eyes so that we can be wise and be happy and praiseworthy. Amen. Jesus is good to know you. A source of a blessing in life is you, Jesus. Thank you for letting us to know you. Thank you for letting us to know you, brothers and sisters. Let's give thanks to God that we have Jesus, the source of blessing. So let's pray and give thanks to God. Give Him praise. So we can know him. Lord, we thank you and we praise you that we can know you. If I didn't know you. I don't know where to go. I don't know the direction of life. I don't know how to pursue blessing. I was still been bumping here and there, thinking that I'm looking for blessing, but actually is going to a darker and darker path. Thank you for letting me know you. Thank you for. Showing me the way of blessing through the Bible, so my life has direction. My life has a way out, and that I know what should my next steps be. Blessings are not far from me, Lord. We thank you. Those who fear the Lord, who walk in His ways. Are blessed. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways. Yes, Lord, today you tell us the way of blessing. You show us clearly. It's so simple, so pure, just to fear the Lord. And walk in His ways. They are blessed, brothers and sisters. Today, let's reflect. God has shown us clearly. As long as we fear Him and walk in His ways, to use His standards, then we can be blessed. Endless blessings will be poured down on us, but today, have we started on the journey on the path of blessing? Here is us fearing the Lord. Do we fear the Lord? Do we treat Him as God, and we as men? Do we really treat Him as God? 
is He the highest standard in our lives? Do we hear His word? Today, in the passage sharing, He mentioned that He let the trap leaders last night to hear last night to hear. If we are someone who can hear God's word, are we willing to listen to God? And most importantly, in our lives, what prevents us from hearing God's word, hearing God's voice? The way is ahead of us, but what is preventing us from hearing? As I heard last night. God spoke to me clearly. I can hear. I know what God is saying to me. But my negativity prevents me to be obedient. I can hear, but if I can walk, can live it out. I may not do it. I'm very negative and fearful. Then I will reject God and say. This doesn't work, and I don't follow. That's my case. Everyone has different reasons not listening to God. So let's meditate too today. Fearing God, listening to Him is the condition of, or is the criteria for being blessed. So we hope that everyone can hear God. But what prevents us from hearing God? Let's close our eyes now. Let's listen to Him. Let's listen quietly. How come I cannot hear Your word? I want to treat you as God. What prevents me from hearing you? How come I cannot listen to the teachings? And now, let's listen. To be quiet and listen. What has prevented us? To hear God's voice, Lord, in the silence, Lord, teach us, instruct us, tell us what has prevented us in our hearts to hear from you. Is our self-centeredness, our stubbornness? The personality that likes to plan, that we don't let go. My pride, my fear, my unbelief. Lord, may you teach me. So today I can understand my heart to know what is blocking between you and me, so that I cannot fear you. Lord, I confess to you. I fear the sense of security more than I fear you. I fear my feelings more than I fear you. I fear. 
when I schedule more than I fear you, Lord, in me, I don't hear you. I like to hear myself and the world, but I don't hear from you. Lord, today, may you help me to return. Today, help me to return. To see the reason for not listening today, I want to deal with it today, so that my life can fear you, so that I can put you in the right place in my life. Lord, I want to say you are my God. You are above me. You are the Creator of heaven and earth. The Are the one who have the best plan. You can see through everything. As I as I fear you and listen to you, my life will be blessed. Lord, help me, help everyone to deal with this. Change our life so that we can fear you. Lord, we're willing to walk in your ways. We're willing to do your will, brothers and sisters. God says, "Fear Him," and then we have to live it out. We should live it out down to earth in our daily life. Live out the word of God to have the breath of the tree of life. So let's reflect now. Am I a lazy person? Do we like shortcuts? Do we like the comfortable path? But we're not willing to take the way of the tree of life. Do we see? Do we feel that the way of the tree of life? We need to sacrifice ourselves to love others. To give more efforts, so we don't choose the path of the tree of life. Today, as we fear God, let's make a decision to keep, walk in His ways, to keep His ways. So let's pray for ourselves. We know our weaknesses where we cannot live it out. Let's pray for ourselves. So if I'm calculative, I say today I will change this. I like to take shortcuts. Today I lay down the worldly ways. I don't take shortcuts. I am stubborn, but today I want to lay this down. So we pray for ourselves. Pray for our weaknesses now. Lord, you hear our prayers this morning. We make a decision before you. Change my weakness. I want to walk in your ways. I don't want to be lazy. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be withdrawn. I don't want to take the shortcuts like the world. I want to work, labor hard, to. Take the path of the tree of life. You said that blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways. Lord, today I treat you as my God. There's no other God in my life. There's no other idols. Only you, Lord. I want to follow you like this to take your path, and know that you will bless me. You bow down to bless me. Brother and sister, let's use first one to pray for ourselves. Read it into our hearts. First one, put our name in first one. Just like this, blessed is Tikva, who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways. Tikva is blessed. So proclaim this first. Put our name there to proclaim it. Pray over it again and again, so that this scripture goes into our hearts and become.
the standard of our life, so that we can have a life of blessing every day, aligning with God. So pray for ourselves. Use our name to pray over first one. Psalm one twenty eight, verse two. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. You shall eat the labor of your hands. You shall be happy. This is profitable for you. You shall be happy. The labor is beneficial. For you, may the Lord help us so that we can lay down everything that blocks us from listening to God and following Him. Help us to labor to do something good, so that our life and our family, our wife and children can be built up. As we do that, we can build up Jerusalem. Build up the kingdom of God. May the Lord give you such wisdom and understanding. Let's pray, Holy Spirit. May you help us, so that from today on, we don't be lazy on the way of God. We don't be a just an observer, but in the kingdom of God, may we labor and eat the labor of our hands. So we can enjoy blessings in the kingdom of God, because this is profitable for us. May the Lord, may you help us, so that we can respond to you to be truly a man who fears you, to walk in your ways. Help us not to be lazy, but we can do your will and let your word be planted in our life. May we rise up to disciple. Others to build up the kingdom of God. Help us so that our life can be blessed. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer.、In、Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Our morning devotion will end here. May the Lord bless you.